Good morning and welcome to the show for all you little guys out there and girls. This is going to be the last lesson before we take the exam after Easter break, so let's get ready. Last topic we need to talk about in terms of ecology or the environment is something called nutrient limitation. Now there's a couple of factors and vocab words that go with this. The first one is primary one degree. That means primary right there. Here, I'll, I'll write that down for you. Something called primary productivity or productivity. Either one is correct. Now let's take a look at the definition of that word. Uh, primary productivity is the rate at which organic matter Now, when you, when you look at this term right here, organic matter, I mean, that can be a lot of things. They, I mean, for the most part, though, you know, that would be food for the rest of us. Or it could just be the materials that the rest of us need to survive and build our own cells. So primary productivity in any ecosystem is the rate at which organic matter is created by producers. Now, everybody watching this show should already know that producers are those organisms that can harness the sun's energy and make what? Anybody remember? Uh, sugar. What's the science name for sugar? Well, not all sugars, but glucose. And then glucose represents this food component. So primary productivity is pretty much how much food can the producers produce in the environment per unit time. Now, let's take a look at the factors. The factors would be anything that affects primary productivity. The number one factor is the amount of nutrients. If you remember from previous lessons, we were calling those the containers. So you got, you got water, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, etc. All of the things you need to build the biological molecules to survive. So the amount of nutrients actually affect how fast or how much producers can produce. Now, watch this. If any nutrient is in short supply, and that could be more than one, or it could be only one, that would then limit growth or primary productivity. Hmm. Interesting. So let's take a, take a look at a nutrient right here. Whoa, crap. I got to quit doing that. I gotta make sure I keep pushing this up as I go. Sorry about that. Here, I'll just let you guys take a look at that real quick. So any nutrient in short supply can limit growth. So if we take a look at any nutrient that is scarce, what's that word mean? Scarce. That means there's not a lot of it. Or let's say that there is a fair amount, but it might cycle slowly. And if you guys go back and look at some of the cycles, you can see they're pretty complex and take a lot of time. If a nutrient is scarce or cycles slowly, or even worse, both, then that nutrient, put this in a box, this is important, is then called a limiting nutrient. And then can affect the amount of productivity. Now in this intro here, I've made it sound like you can only slow it down, but primary productivity in terms of growth can also be accelerated. So let's take a look at an example. And I'll wrap up the unit with this. Let's take a look at an example of how primary productivity through a limiting nutrient can, can uh, affect the ecosystem. And we're going to do something called an algal bloom. And all you, although you may not have heard of this before, you've seen it. So I'm going to draw a little picture. And you guys know I am not a very good drawer. So I'm going to do, we'll just do it like a big hillside like that. And then sitting at the bottom right here, we have a pond. Okay? Now, what I didn't tell you is this little drawing. Okay? This is really a pasture or it's an ag field. So for those of you living in Redneck America, we're on a farm. And there's a couple things on a farm that I know. You have animals for the most part. There's going to be some animals on there. And if they're out in the fields, guess what they're doing? They're pooing. <laughs> and if it's an ag field and not a pasture or a combination of both separated by fences, what you're also going to have 
is farmers are going to be manipulating the soils and they're going to be adding fertilizer. And if there's one thing I know that's in fertilizer, it's this element, N. Hmm, which one is that? Nitrogen. Does anybody know which one nitrogen was for? That was for building protein. So if you can build protein, guess what else you can build? You can build cells. Okay, now where am I going with this? Well, let's take, for example, a farmer has just fertilized this field. Okay, then you get a heavy downpour. You get heavy rain. And you guys know on a farm, where are all the ponds? They're in the low spots so that they naturally collect water, right? So when it rains, all of that water is going to find its way into the pond. And what is it going to carry with it? Oh, I don't know. Let's look over here. <gasps> We're going to add nitrogen into that pond. And what's nitrogen good for? Building proteins, making cells. Now, do you see this word up here, algal? What's that refer to? Algae. You see that? There's algae already in that pond. All right, now let's assume we have really good growing conditions. You know, it's late spring, early summer, and all of a sudden, your pond goes from beautiful, clean water to green muck. Hey, guess what that is? When that green muck appears, that's called an algal bloom, and you guys have seen this. If it's warm enough, this happens in one day. This could happen overnight, and the next thing you know, it's all mucky, and it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Well, why does that happen? Well, what happened is we took extra nitrogen from the fertilizer that we were artificially putting into the ecosystem, and then the heavy rains just washed it into the pond. And when that happens, the algae, they experience an explosion of growth. Why? Well, look what we did. We took a limiting nutrient. We took a limiting nutrient. Whoops. We took a limiting nutrient and we severely and unnaturally increased the concentration, that's what those brackets mean, of nitrogen. Well, if nitrogen can be used to make proteins, these algae now have everything they need to start rapid reproduction. Rapid reproduction. And what happens? You see them all over the surface of the pond, and it becomes like a thick, thick mat all over the surface of the pond. Now, you might be thinking, hey, Scarabs, if you're an algae, this sounds like a good deal. Well, it is. But what happens is, is you unnecessarily upset the balance in the ecosystem. So if you took, take a look at this, if we get an increase in population, these algae are going to take from the water everything they need. What's, that, what's another limiting nutrient in this aquatic environment that these algae are going to be gobbling up? They're going to start to use all of the oxygen that's in the water. Hmm. If you take the oxygen out of the water, what happens to all of the other aquatic organisms in that ecosystem? I'll tell you what happens, and some of you may have seen this. I've seen it a few times in my life working at golf courses. What you get is something that we like to call a fish kill. And unfortunately, it can kill all of the fish in a matter of days if it gets thick enough. And then when you look at this algal bloom, this is what creates stagnant water. Can you guys see? Yeah, you can see that. Stagnant water is any water that's low in oxygen. And you can see this is not a good thing in that aquatic environment. So if I wrap this up, so if we took a look at the pyramid now, Okay, so I'm going to put that there. All right, so right here we have herbivores. And then we have carnivores. And then we have the top. You can see what happens here. Watch, you're like, hey, scurbs, there's no producers. Yeah, huh, watch. If you increase the concentration of nitrogen as a limiting nutrient, watch what happens to the bottom of the pyramid. Uh-huh, look at this. The producer slice of the pie now exponentially increases unnaturally. And you might be thinking, hey, Scurbs, no, that's, there's more for everything else to eat. But when you look at an aquatic environment, the producers are going to use the oxygen. And when you take the oxygen out of the water, 
what happens to the ecosystem? It collapses on top of itself. Here's the key. If I have to wrap it up with one word, in an ecosystem, when you take a look at both the non-living components and the living, success is really determined by the, by the maintenance of some type of balance. And that's the key, no doubt about it. Huh. And that brings us to the end of the ecology unit. So what I'm going to do, we're not allowed to do any homework over the break, so I'll sign a little thing for this, and then when we come back on Tuesday, I'll sign you the review activity, and then the test on ecology will be uh, late next week. So everybody get ready for that. If you have any questions, as always, let me know.